G'day guys, how are you? Now today I'm going to show you how you can use your Microsoft uh, Access uh, as a login for Visual Studio. So let's begin. First we're going to start off by going to Access. Let it load up. And just click on Database and name it something. I'm just going to call it... Um, just going to call it... But just... Um, VS Users. Yep. Once you're in there, we're going to right click on the uh, tab here and click on save and we're going to name it. So just call it users or user usernames. Yeah, that'll do. Great. After you did that, right click and go to design view. In here, this is where the magic happens. So we have our ID here. If you want, you can leave that as default. Though normally I like to have like a, a customer. And if you are using um, access, please remember to use underscore. Otherwise, if you can't put a space there. I mean, you can, but it just causes problems later on with using access. Ah, uh, sorry, Visual Studio. You can have it on them for customer IDs, but we're just going to go to uh, number for now. Great. After that, type in username and just make a short text and password. Awesome. Now right click again and go to data sheet. Now just for here we're just going to type in an example. So I'm just going to write in um, admin and admin, believe it or not. And that'll do just for now. Okay. Uh, you probably don't have to do this, but do it anyways, just, just because. Great, so once that's done we can press save and we can close out of it. We are done using this now at this stage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Visual Studio. I'm using 2005 Community Edition because it's free and Visual Studio can be quite expensive. Although this does everything everyone does anyways. I'm going to get a new project just for now. And uh, I'm using Visual Basic for this particular tutorial. I'm going to go Classic Desktop. I'm going to go to Windows Forums Application. In here, um, I'm just going to call this VS Tutorial. Uh, oops, tutorial. Just for now, you can call it whatever you like, of course, whatever floats your boat. All right, so this looks probably for me to everybody. This is our form. Um, now, where do we want to begin? Oh yes, we want to go now to the Solution Explorer, and we're going to right click on it and go to Add, and go to New Item. Of course, you can do it up here too. And just in here. Um, we want to, um, <clears throat> geez, what am I doing? Let me think. Let's add another form for now. Uh, do -do -do -do, form. I'm just going to call it main page. And I'm going to right click and rename this one to login. Yes. Cool. There's our login and there's our main page. Now I'm going to go to data sources and I'm going to select where our data, where our um, access database file is. And there it is. If you do have problems with the um, connection part here, which some people do have, uh, I recommend downloading the access connection compatibility pack. It's back from 2007 Office and uh, that will fix your problems. Cool. If you are using it for me, you can copy that. You don't have to, but you know, I do it anyways. I might need a lot. You don't need views, but since it's there, why well, not click on it anyways? Cool. So now you're going to see um, your data sources come here. And uh, now what we're going to do is um, I like to do it in detail mode, mode, just because I just I don't like the whole table thing for this particular. Uh, we're, we're not going to use a grid, of course. Grids are good in other ways, uh, other ways, keeping stock and things like that, and having an overlay of it. Okay, so once you see this, just go ahead and delete them. We don't need them for now. And now we're going to add a couple of labels and text boxes. Now, I usually hate tutorials when they're adding in text boxes and labels and making everything you know, perfect. And it's like it's a tutorial and, and you're wasting time, kind of thing. So just do this ASAP. Alright, you know what they are. Um, so this will be, I will just change this for those that are new to this. Username. This is our 
password. The Hibithi one made this bigger. All of them, right? Uh, sorry, the dragon sort of all over all of them. I right, let's use the Vendetta one, and we'll just go for a size 12. Righto. Just so you guys can see in case you can't. For this, I don't recommend deleting it. Just struggle with that. What I would suggest doing, because you might need it other times, because it can be a bit of a pain to get back. Uh, I would recommend clicking on it like that and sort of highlighting it, and going to visibility and just turning it off. Just as simple as that. Right. Now I'm I'm guessing that those of you that um that have uh, are looking at this tutorial, I'm I'm guessing you guys have done the you know if textbox one dot text equals blah blah or textbox two dot text equals so and so then you know um me dot shell or whatever. I'm guessing you guys have done that before. Um, so this will be our login button. Login. Shit, I made a mistake there. That's on the design, you, don't want, you can touch that if you want, but just, I don't really care, I like it all pretty standard to be honest. Login uh, button to you, I just meant it's a clear button. And this will be my about or exit button. Let's make it about. No, let's just make it exit, just because. Alright, so here's my, um, here's my window. Um, we don't want anyone to resize it. So I'm just going to go fixed, and we don't want anyone to uh, make it maximum either. So just click here on the maximum box and go to false. If they want, they can minimize it, that's fine. And we want to start in the center of the screen. So, for example, if I start this application now, uh, it says there's a problem because I changed the name, probably. Yeah, see? That's cool. So, what we're going to do is we're going to change this part here to main page because I changed it before, so that will now fix. Perfect. Here's our the start of our application. Now, as you can see here, it's going to show a password. There's two ways we can get around this. Uh, number one, what most people do is they just go to password characters, which is uh, right here. And if you do that, put a little um, star in there, it will show a star. But I don't really like that to be honest. I like the um, the dots. Um, so using system password characters, turn that on, and this looks much better. So I just I like the dots better. It, it looks more professional than having asterisks in that so 1980s. Alright, so this is our main page, even though it's not our login page, but whatever. Got the ram the wrong way, never mind. Um, okay, so. Just for my own sake. Alright, now for exit, we can go me.close and make sure you do end at the, at the end of it, because this will also end the, the process. Now, by process, I mean that if you don't do the end part, it will still be in here. And if you do have a link to the database, it'll it'll start over like, like lapping and yeah, it's not good. All right, so let's begin. Um, let's double click on login, and uh, let's make this look a bit more neater. Now we're gonna go dim, which is uh, declaring a variable user name as uh, a string. We want to be a string, and the same with password. We want it also to be a, a string as well. Uh, you will see in a minute while we're doing that. So uh, now what we're going to do is um, username equals textbox one dot text. We know that's textbox one. How do we know? Because I know because it's the first one I made. But if if for some amazing reasons they got switched around, go to the design part here and you can see that this is the name of this is the like this is its code name. And this is it, wherever it is. All right. Okay, this is a better way to show. This is its code name, label one, and this is its sort of front end name, text username. All right. And we also want to do the same. So password uh, equals textbox two. Textbox two dot text. Great. Now that we've done that. We're going to um, go to our data source. No, we're not. We're going to go to the Solution Explorer, and we're going to yeah go to our data source, I suppose. And um, what are we going to do here? We're going to double click on it, and it brings up this. Now, when I first seen this, it was quite intimidating to be honest, but it's really not that bad. Um, so just select this one here and right click and go to Add Query. And um, using the SQL statement, whatever. Go to the second one, select which returns a single value. Righto. 
and um, you will be presented with this. Now, just off the bat, delete exactly where I'm deleting, so from the end of the bracket to the start of the capital C, and put a star, asterisk, whatever, and from there, we have usernames. So we're now going to select, uh, remember how I made those, these parts here, for example? These are our kind of, um, like our rows, I guess you could say. Like these are our data values that we want. So where would we want to start? So just write in where, and then type in user name, or whatever you've typed in here. It could be anything. Equals question mark, because I've got no idea what it is. And, and, yeah, and. <laughs> so capital A and D, and password. And what does that equal? Well, I've got no idea. So that's that's what we're going to leave it as. Now we're going to go to the, the builder. And if you've done it correctly, it should look like this. If you haven't, it's going to pop up a message. Just double check over this um, sentence that I've written. And just make sure the asterisks and be careful if you've got like say usernames you've written usernames and you've, I've written username but if you've written usernames um, make sure that where is in the middle otherwise it won't work after that we're going to go to this execute one now just put in your details first so I typed in admin and admin if you've typed in your own kind of details type them in first it won't hurt it just type in the first if you've got say three usernames type in the first one it won't hurt it, I promise. So now press OK and then click Next. Uh, I'm just going to write at the end of this login. And that's it, finish. Great, there it is there. I know that's my login and there's what it's going to look for. Awesome. So now we're going to go back to the main page and into the login button. How I know this is button one because it was the first one I created. And um, let me think here. I've had a few to drink. So at this stage, um, we're now going to type in uh, if me dot show it's like table table ah uh, username is table adapter dot uh, I forgot what it is to be honest. If I see ah there we go that login thing that I did and it's asking for brackets. So I just type in username which is the top one there and dash password. Uh, then, so if the username, so how can I explain this? If the username table adapter and whatever's in that database, the, out of these two, if it's any of them, then we want it to show the login page because I made a mistake at the start. So for you, it will probably be like form two or something, but because I made a mistake, because uh, I'm already on the main page, I just want to say login dot show me dot hide but actually a matter of fact before I do that I wanted to also clear those text boxes just in case I have a log out button and um, let's go clear I'm so used to doing Windows Phone where you've got to actually type in dot text equals like that they both mean the same thing so that's that uh, if you want it you can get it to show a message so you can now do a message box like this, which is probably what more people do because it gives you a chance to do box style, but because I've been using the nice phone lately, I've just been doing it this way because I'm using it in civil light. So you can do, you know, welcome, welcome, and then a heading, uh, information, and then we need to add a button, so dash message box buttons dot okay you know it's no problem great and that will then hide it but however if I this is exactly the same as kind of the other way of doing it with um you know if it's the same principle except we're just telling it look in a different place so else so if it is something else message box dot show and you know honestly I could go in here and I could write uh, dim message as String, uh, string equals, and then I could put here error, please. Um, sorry. Uh, um, the user, called use 
is first name or password was incorrect. Please try again. And we'll, oh, so that's the string. Great. So then in there, I can then type in message, which is that string. And then if I want, I can give it a heading as well. So I can just write here information and then a little This is good because, say, for example, you've got like a version, like this is version 1.1 or something like that. And um, like, say, what I could do then is I could make a string that says like message. And then if I just want to change one little thing in, and I've got like, say, this same string for 12 pages, then I could just boom, boom, version 1.1. So, for example, right, I might have like a, a version 1, right, just like that, 1.0. And if I, like, if I made the same code here, same text, sorry, for like every single individual, 12 or 13 or whatever, that, that would be kind of annoying and a waste of time. So I could easily make a string here, and there's my string, so that will pop up. And so, for all those pages, all I could do is change that, and that's it. Bob's your uncle. Awesome, so that looks like we're ready to go. Um, we've got the message box to show, and whenever a, a password is incorrect, we would normally want it to also clear the text boxes because there's nothing worse than deleting text boxes that were, um, you know, whatever. Once again, these are the same thing, it's just in Windows Phone you've got to use this way. Awesome, so let's give our, let's give our um, program a try. Press F5, it's the hotkey. So if I'm just going to type in, oh shit, the wrong button. Uh, the username is incorrect, let's try it again. Obviously, for clear, if I want that to work, because it didn't work, since you might have seen, just copy that code there into the clear button, which wherever that is, and that will work. So now let's type in Andrew. No, I didn't have it as Andrew. I just admin, admin, and login, and there's our welcome screen, and there is our form one. You can make that start in the middle if you want, or however you want it, really. Now, um, if you want to add a new user, okay, so it's quite simple, really. Go to your database, and then with content. Um, this won't pop up if you're not using it. If you are using uh, Visual Studio, obviously, there's like a link or something. All right, so I'm just going to go to, and I'm going to type in James. And I'm going to type in uh, red car 01. Right, I save. Okay, so that we've now saved that to our database. Now, if you wanted to, there is an option in here where you can uh, encrypt the password. See, so you can easily do that if you want to save people from stealing passwords. Uh, I like using the access way because with SQL, um, at least with access, I can use it on any computer. It doesn't, regardless if it has SQL or not. Um, it's just everyone has Microsoft Office these days. All right, so username. So if I type in James and Red Car One, there we go. It has entered. So guys, I hope this tutorial has helped. Uh, if you have any questions or whatnot, I, I mean I've kind of chucked a few things in here that I've kind of shown you how you can do things. Um, just get back on this. If you like, I said, if you did want this to be clear, text box one dot text equals nothing, and text box two dot text equals nothing. All right. So once again, just type in anything clear. They've been cleared. Exit. Boom. It's exited. So that's another thing too. Why I said to put N because, for example, before I uh, when I had James and I'm stuck in red car or one because I love that car. If I click across here. You can see that it, it, the process is still running. Do you see that? Um, so I've had to actually stop that. So another reason why I said it's good to have that that end part of the code is when I press uh, exit. If I didn't have end there, it would still run nine times out of ten. So anyways, once again, I hope this tutorial has helped. If you have any questions, please um please let me know, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.